place is 300 and sometimes 400 feet tall. Pieces of ice were shooting up out of the ocean at 600 feet and then falling. The only way that you can really try to put it into scale with human reference is if you imagine Manhattan. And all of a sudden, all of those buildings just start to rumble and quake and peel off and just fall over and fall over and roll around. This whole massive city just breaking apart in front of your eyes. We're just observers. These two little dots on the side of the mountain. And we watched and recorded the largest witness cabin event ever caught on tape. So how big was this cabin event that we just looked at? We'll resort to some illustrations again to give you a sense of scale. It's as if the entire lower tip of Manhattan broke off, except that the thickness, the height of it, is equivalent to buildings that are two and a half or three times higher than they are. Environmentalists show us images of crumbling and crashing icebergs to demonstrate the effects of global warming. When I see icebergs, it reminds me of enterprises. Just like icebergs, only a small percentage of an enterprise, company, corporations, business, whatever term you like to think of it as, is visible to outsiders. The greater mass that supports the enterprise, the core competency, is hidden behind the scenes. But that's what makes an enterprise unique and distinct against its competitors, gives it a competitive advantage. This is what makes Roche different to Novartis, UBS from Credit Suisse, or Apple from Microsoft. I have spent majority of my life dreaming about studying and working in the software industry across multitude of market sectors globally. And based on my experience, I believe that our approach to software technology is aging and is causing us to lose our enterprise knowledge. Today, I would cover, I would like to cover three areas. Why we are experiencing this loss. What is the recipe for success to stop the loss? And finally, I like to introduce you to Sam, my vision of how future should be. But before we go forward, I like to get some terminology level setting. Basically, technology has three components, hardware, software, and information. Hardware is physical body of technology, what you can touch, feel, drop, and break. And just like us, they come in many shapes, forms, sizes, and colors. Software is the smart or the brain of technology. We write coded instructions for the hardware to perform algorithms and logic. And again, just like us, there is a whole variety to be had. Finally, 
Information is knowledge. Knowledge can be simple or complex. It can be learnt or developed. Learnt knowledge is learning what already exists. And it can have simple, basic components, or it can have um, complex algorithm and rules. Developed knowledge is taking what we already know to a whole new frontiers. So if you want to think of it as a language, language has simplicity of words and complexity of rules and grammar. And by learning what already exists, you learn a language. But language is a living thing. We add new words and phrases to it every day. Email, internet, glamping. None of these existed 50 years ago. From the beginning, Hardware and software have been in sibling rivalry. Hardware was clunky, big, slow, and expensive. And software was fast and nimble. So all the focus was put on hardware for it to improve. And all the technological advancements that we are seeing today are primarily thanks to the hardware technology. To put that in context for you, how many people have an iPhone? Quite a few. Did you know your iPhone has more than one million times more processing storage? It has more than seven million times more memory storage and more than 100,000 times more processing power than Apollo 11 that landed the first man on the moon 50 years ago, <coughs> you can now afford to purchase and hold a supercomputer in your hand. And you could do none of that with the Apollo 11 mission control system. Meanwhile, the problems of today's world have grown and become much more complex due to globalization and interdependency within and across market sectors. All the failures we're experiencing today are primarily because software technology hasn't progressed since conception. This sort of reminds me of the hare and a tortoise story. And for anybody who's not sure what hare is, hare is a wild rabbit. So I'm sure you have all seen the cartoon or the story where the hare and the tortoise decide to have a competition, a race. And obviously, hare is just so well qualified. I mean, it's faster, it's smarter, and the tortoise is clunky, slow. And the hare becomes complacent and only wakes up on the side of the road from the cheering and clapping as the tortoise is crossing the finish line. This is what's happened to software technology. And this is why we're experiencing so many failures and problems in our world today. Some of you may be thinking, who cares? Big companies, they can afford it. Let them waste their money. Not my problem. Think again. When British Airways had system problems, several hundred flights were cancelled or delayed. For six hours, across seven states, more than 6,000 people could not make 911 emergency call that they needed. When O2 had telephone network problems in UK, more than 30 million callers across multitude of service providers could not send or receive calls. And when Boeing had system problems, 
two planes crashed out of the sky and 436 passengers and crew died. Technology problems are all our problems, yours and mine. With our growing dependency on the aging technology, we are losing our ability to keep our minds fit. Our mind, just like muscles in our body, needs to get exercise in order to stay fit. And it does that through learning, remembering, and problem solving. How can we be expected to solve the greater problems that lay ahead of us? when the technology is doing all the remembering and decision-making for us. This is sort of makes me think, we are turning into dumb robots following instructions of a computer, while the robots are finding their artificial intelligence. Throughout ages, Masters would handpick their apprentice and would teach them all that they knew. In turn, each apprentice would take the learned knowledge, augment it with their developed knowledge, before passing it to their apprentices. With the dawn of technology, the greatest mind of our time decided to put all that they knew into computer code with the hope that greater number of apprentices could be reached. Inadvertently, we have created more consumers and fewer apprentices. And the master's knowledge is locked in unreadable, undocumented computer code. And with each iteration, we are losing a little bit more of that. We need to smarten up. We need to find a better and newer way to develop software technology. One that extends our abilities, our greatest asset, while protects our learned and developed knowledge for the future generations to build upon. Have you ever wondered why we admire computers so much? They're everything that we're not. Computers and humans have complementary abilities. That means our strengths and weaknesses are opposite each other. Computers are fast and accurate, and they're very good at detailed repetitive work. We, on the other hand, are amazing at pattern recognition and creativity. Instead of fighting it or try and mimicking one another, why don't we bring the best of each together? Computer methodologies are like recipe books. You read the guidebook, the recipe book, you follow the bits you understand or agree with, you ignore the bits you don't, and then you try and fit in the bits that don't quite fit in. That's why no one's ever fully compliant to any software methodology. It's like you have a winning recipe and you share it with your friend. And your friend says, I did that, it didn't work. Did you follow the recipe? Of course I did. I did exactly what the recipe did. I just substituted non-fat margarine for the butter. I eliminated sugar and almond because I don't like those. And I couldn't be bothered to beat the egg to the hard peak, so I just mixed it in. But I followed the recipe exactly, and it didn't work. I rest my case. If we're gonna have a successful recipe for moving forward, we need to make sure we bring the best of each together, humans and computers.
And we put in the mechanism to make sure that everyone is compliant with the rules of the game and any deviations are tracked and managed. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Sam. Smarter approach methodology. It's my vision of how future software enterprise development should be. One that I'm committed to bring to life. Sam will provide a whole new experience in software development. No more coding. <laughs> now, some of you may be thinking, wait a minute, at the beginning she told us we need code to tell the hardware what to do. Yeah, we do. But I didn't say we have to write it. While we focus on capturing human logic in a way that's easily understood by all, Behind the scene, Sam can translate that logic to an executable code that is in zeros and ones that the hardware needs to work with. While we focus on finding problem patterns and coming up with creative strategic solutions, Sam can document and manage all the details behind the scenes. Sam can also protect our learned and developed knowledge for the future generation to build upon. And by doing that, by focusing on our strengths, we can improve the quality of end result by reducing our errors and mistakes while we increase the cost, uh, sorry, reduce the cost and time to market. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> One of our uh, challenges in the software industry is in order to develop software, we start with the hardware. And the software is built and designed on that specific hardware. That's why you can't just pick it up and put it somewhere else. You have to start building from scratch again. With a SAM solution, we can focus on solving the problem. And we can move the SAM solu solution from any hardware platform to any hardware platform with press of a button. SAM is not just a vision. All the pieces exist today. They just need to be brought together in the right way. SAM is my signature recipe. Now, as my friends would vouch, I don't shut up talking about it because I'm really excited <laughs> about the whole idea. And what I ask is that you take this topic and talk with your friends, your colleagues, total strangers, about the impact of aging technology and the knowledge loss that we are experiencing. For the last 150 years, we have been debating if there is a global warming. Let's hope the discussion around knowledge loss doesn't take us as long. <laughs> the time is now. We need to become smarter about our approach to technology. We need to lay a solid new foundation to build upon, one that would protect and preserve our developed and learned knowledge to pass to future generation while maximizes our capabilities along the way. Demand a smarter approach to build a smarter future for us all.